it is time for Bible study. We are glad that you chose to join us. We encourage you to catch up on this series on the Holy Spirit if you have missed the lesson along the way. We also want you to check out our YouTube channel, and there you'll find other Bible studies for all ages, for the children, for our youth, and even some adult Bible classes from some of our other teachers. Join us for worship on Sundays at 10 a.m., either online or in person. We're going to get into our study here after a word of prayer. Have your Bibles ready, as we'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 on today. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we love you. We thank you so much for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. Thank you for just this privilege to study your word. We ask that it will find a resting place in our hearts, that it will challenge us, that it will inspire us and motivate us to be the people that you have called us to be. We pray for a spirit of calm in our hearts. We pray for peace in our nation. We pray for an end to this pandemic. We pray for healing, for restoration, for unity. Help us to love others as we love ourselves. Help us to love others as your son Jesus has loved us. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. As we continue our series on the Holy Spirit, uh, we're looking today at the Spirit and the Temple of God. There are some texts in 1 Corinthians that talk about this concept of the temple, the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so today we're looking at the Spirit and the temple of God. We begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. There Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, writes, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. Paul starts off with this phrase, do you not know? And this phrase is a, Paul, a phrase that Paul repeats and uses uh, 10 times in 1 Corinthians. And there, there's this sense of frustration that Paul is experiencing. And we learn from Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 11, that Paul was instrumental in establishing the congregation at Corinth. And he spent a year and a half teaching them the word of God. So you can see why Paul would be frustrated because he knows what he taught them. He knows what he poured into them and invested into their lives through his ministry. And he's like, did y'all already forget? Don't you know? I know I taught this. Don't you realize that you are the temple of God? Uh, the, the you here that Paul is referring to uh, in Texan would be y'all. Uh, do y'all not know that y'all are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in y'all? Uh, and uh, he says, if any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, and that is what y'all are. You all are the temple of God. Uh, and so when, when Paul speaks here, he's not saying that each individual Christian is a temple within which God's spirit dwells. That's not the point he's making here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But rather, he is saying that the spirit of God dwells in the church corporately as a community. Uh, the spirit of God dwells in the body of Christ as a whole within the congregation there at the church of Corinth. So the spirit is a gift for the people of God and not just for a person. Paul declares that the church at Corinth was the temple of God. Uh, think about that for a moment. Temples, a uh, temple. The temple was the home of a deity. And in Christ, that home is with a people and not in a building. Uh, the dwelling place of the Spirit is in the midst 
of a people, in the presence of a people. It's not in a church building, but it's the people who occupy that building, the people who are called together as the body of Christ. There's something to be said about the church as the community of the Holy Spirit. You are not fulfilling your God-given mission if you are not in community with other Christians who make up the temple of God. This temple, Paul says, it's holy. Why, why would this temple be holy? Well, the Spirit dwells in us. The Spirit is a part of the life of those who are part of the community of believers, the fellowship, the church. We have been equipped and empowered to be holy. And so Paul says, do not destroy the temple of God. If someone destroys the temple of God, if they destroy the church, it says God will destroy him. Uh, this whole idea of destroying the church, destroying the temple of God. Uh, Paul earlier in chapter three talks about being careful how you build. And so he uses a building analogy to talk about maturity in Christ and growing in, in the Lord, how uh, you build upon the foundation that has been established by Christ and by the apostles. Uh, he, he said in verse number 11, no one can lay a foundation other than the one which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation upon which the temple of God is built. Uh, in essence, the gospel is what we have believed and obeyed to become the temple of of God. And so Paul says, be careful uh, not to destroy the temple. And he's not talking about being able to kill the church, uh, but as congregations of the body of Christ, uh, there are individuals within congregations who can wreak havoc, who can disrupt the church, who can destroy uh, the temple of God. And, and so uh, I want you to think for a moment, how can someone destroy the temple of God? Think about that. How can someone destroy the temple of God? What are your, what are your thoughts? When you look at the context of 1 Corinthians, uh, particularly in chapter 3, the context is division. And so division can destroy the temple of God. False teaching that undermines the faith of believers, a rivalry that creates dissension and rips churches apart, weak discipleship that uh, promotes easy believism and uh, all are, are problems that weaken the foundation of the church. They begin to uh, chip away at the temple of God, the building of God. And so strong churches are essential so that when attacks come from without and even from within, the church will stand firm because we are the temple of God. And as the temple of God, the Holy Spirit dwells in the community of the people of God. Now, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, we're going to be looking at verses 9 through 20. We'll start at verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you, 
but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Uh, Paul here is dealing with the issue of sanctification. And sanctification is going to be the key issue that he addresses in uh, these verses and those that follow. There was a time when those in the church at Corinth were considered unrighteous, but they practiced uh, the sins listed among other sins. And, and Paul reminds them of the change that took place once they obeyed the gospel, uh, that they were in this category of unrighteous, and those who are unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. But he lets them know that Christ and the Spirit of God were at work in washing, justifying, and sanctifying them. And that's great to know that no matter our past life, we are washed, we are justified, we are sanctified through the work of Christ and through the work of the Spirit of God. So the unrighteous things that we engaged in before Christ became Lord of our lives should now be abandoned that Jesus Christ is our Lord. And God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all taking part in transforming us from our sinful lives to a new way of living in obedience to God. And so unrighteousness should not be the characteristic of those who have been sanctified by the Spirit of God. Unrighteousness should not be the habit, the practice, the pattern, the characteristic of those who've been sanctified by the Spirit of God. And so uh, we've been washed, sanctified, justified, so we should live like it. Then uh, Paul continues in verse number 12 through 14 says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food is for the stomach, and the stomach is for food, but God will do away with both of them. Yet the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. Now God has not only raised the Lord, but he will raise us up through his power. Uh, here, Paul uh, is talking about this whole idea of things being lawful versus expedient. And it seems to be that the Corinthians were taking this attitude that uh, now that they were in Christ, they could do whatever they wanted to do because they had this freedom that was in Christ. And so while Christ has taken away sin, this does not mean that everything is beneficial and that believers can just do what they know is wrong. Uh, so Paul makes the point, all things might be uh, lawful, but understand that everything is profitable, not everything is useful, not everything is helpful, not everything is expedient. All things are lawful, but I will not be mastered by anything. Uh, while, while some actions may not be specifically forbidden in scripture, we should know that these actions and their results are not beneficial to ourselves or to the body of Christ, to the church. Believers should be using our freedom, our Christian liberty to share the gospel and to show love for others instead of looking for ways to gratify ourselves. Uh, so some actions are not sinful in in and of themselves, but they are not appropriate because they can control our lives and lead us away from God. That's the whole idea. It might be lawful, but I will not be mastered by anything. Believers should not do things and take actions that can allow them to be enslaved. Freedom is a mark of the Christian faith. Freedom from sin and guilt, freedom to use and enjoy all the things that God has freely given to us. 
but we should not abuse our freedom and hurt ourselves or others by our freedom because the abuse of freedom can return us to bondage. And so uh, Paul, Paul here is, is uh, addressing this issue. He's also setting up his argument to refute what they felt about the body, that the body was uh, not connected to the spirit and what the body did was one thing and what the spirit did was another thing. But Paul makes it clear the body is not for immorality, but the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. And he goes on to uh, speak of the resurrection, how uh, in the last days there will be a resurrection, a bodily resurrection, not disembodied spirits, but we will be clothed. We will have bodies that are uh, immortal. And so he wants us to know that the body is important. Now, when he gets into verse number 15, he continues and builds on this idea of the body. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ. Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? May it never be. Or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her? For he says, the two shall become one flesh, but the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you've been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul was making the point that the church was the temple of God because the church dwelt with the, the spirit dwelt within the church as a whole. Here he's referring to the individual. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the dwelling place of the spirit. And so the point is there is not a separation between the physical self and the spiritual self. Our connection to Christ is one of both body and spirit. So I can't just do whatever I want to with my body and say, oh, my spirit is good because I just did it with my body, which is separate from my spirit. No, no. And, and so Paul here, he speaks to some of the corrupt and immoral behavior that the church was engaged in, and uh, some of it referred to sexual immorality. And he makes the point, uh, don't you know your bodies belong to Christ? Your bodies are members of Christ. So shall I take that which belongs to Christ and join it to a prostitute? May it never be. Uh, and he makes this point that sex makes two people one. And so he says, uh, when you join yourself to a prostitute, you are one body with that prostitute. But when you join yourself to the Lord, you are one spirit with him. And, and so your, your spiritual man should reign and rule what your body does. Therefore, you flee immorality because immorality is a sin. Sexual immorality is a sin against the body. Uh, you become glued to a prostitute is what that word join means. Uh, you become glued to. And the idea is when you glue something to another, the bond is designed to be permanent. And so when that bond is broken, there uh, those things which have been glued together now are damaged as well. And so when a person engages in 
uh, sexual relationships outside of marriage, there's damage that is done. And, and so we are to flee immorality, run from it. We're not wired to say no, We're not wired to stay there and fight it. We are to run from it. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are to be glued to the Lord so that our spirit is in unity with his spirit. There are actions that we should take because we are joined to the Lord. And Paul is referring to us individually belonging to the Lord. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is the place where the Spirit of God dwells. We are the possession of God because we possess the Spirit. And since we possess the Spirit, the Spirit should possess us. The Spirit should shape our actions and our behavior, just as the temple was a place for worship, sacrifice, prayer, and communion with God, so should our bodies be used to implement the high purposes of God. Our bodies should be used for worship and sacrifice and fellowship, communion with God. Understanding the price paid for our freedom allows us to live in appreciation of that freedom. Jesus gave his life to free us. And so we glorify God in our body and with our body because we've been bought with a price. The body as the spirit's temple affirms its importance to God. As Christians, we cannot indulge our bodies because they are unimportant, uh, nor can we punish our bodies in order to be saved or become more spiritual. Our bodies are highly important, and so we must honor God with our bodies by showing our gratefulness for Jesus' sacrifice by our worship, our obedience, and our service. We are the temple. We are the dwelling place of the Spirit of God. And so as you think about this, I want you to uh, begin to think through and process what is so harmful about sexual immorality. Uh, Paul uh, makes this sin and he spotlights it and says that it's a sin that's done against the body. So what's harmful about sexual immorality? What can we do to counteract the influences of an over-sexualized society? Uh, we see illicit sex at every turn. And so how can we as Christians counteract the influences of an over-sexualized society? And what are the implications for our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit? Uh, discuss these ideas with others. Think on them. Uh, reflect on them. What uh, are the implications of this lesson uh, as it relates to your life? Uh, have you been divorcing the physical self from the spiritual self? Have you become mastered by things that may not be sin, but they are not uh, profitable for you? Reflect on it in your time in prayer. And we look forward to seeing you next time uh, when the Lord allows us to be together to continue our study. And in preparation for next time, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. God bless you and have a great day.